Joe, the good news is there's nothing wrong with Mike's feet. Either you're riding unbalanced or your saddle doesn't fit. I'm gonna get you a new saddle today. <laughs> Shouldn't be hard at all. Where am I gonna find a saddle that fits? It is amazing how many people are talking about saddle fitting when I'm shoeing. It drives them crazy. I completely understand. Let's get this off. Ah, oh, this is so frustrating. This seems very primitive. It just this does not seem like a very accurate way to measure. I'm Come on. You, I'm just going by what the catalog says. It says to send in this cardboard template along with the pictures of Mikey and that they will find a custom fit saddle. There's got to be a better way to measure this. I saddle. have an idea. Let's look on the internet. Why did you ask me down here? I've okay. got two saddles that do not fit my horse. Let's not beat around the bush, Robert. We need a saddle that fits. How are you different from every other Joe out there? That's well, what we want to know. Well, let me get my horse and I'll show you. This is a computer pressure sensor pad that we originally developed for measuring pressures on humans in hospital beds. This technology permits us to actually see a color representation of the pressure on the horse's back. Now, expert saddle fitters claim that we need to fit the saddle so it fits evenly on the horse's back. Now, to test that theory, we have molded a piece of plastic into a mirror image of this horse's back. Since the plastic is clear, we can actually see that it fits this horse perfectly. Okay, so now what we're going to do is put the plastic to test this idea if an even surface actually does what everybody says it does. Okay. So we've got that with a little bit of padding for the horse. You've got a space in the middle here, and then you've got pressure top and bottom. That's called bridging. Okay. That's how you get the white hairs on the horse. But what's interesting is that's the, that was the one with the equal distribution. You so got it. You got it. That's the issue. That's working. the issue, that what you've been told for all these years is false. So it doesn't matter if the saddle weight is evenly distributed because when the rider gets in the saddle it all changes. Exactly. Right? And you developed this system? Yeah. I'm really shocked that I've been so misled by all the other saddle companies. I mean not just me, everybody has been misled. Yeah, I was pretty shocked myself when I, you know, found out about it. I mean, I built this thing 10 years ago. So you mean to tell me they've known about this for 10 years? No uh, wonder we couldn't find a saddle to fit. Well, you can see the problem. How are you going to fix it? That's well, the, what I finally discovered is, is that, like most things that are solved today, is you apply mathematics one way or another. So what, what I've done is I basically built a mechanical device that breaks the polyform shape of the horse's back into angles and arcs. And once you have those areas described, you then can write a formula that's capable of, of changing the effect of the weight of the rider relative to the weight of the horse. So if you have a 90 pound rider on a 1600 pound horse, it obviously is going to have no effect. Right. But if you're going to have a 250 pound rider on an 800 pound Arab, now you're going to have a major effect. So you have to adjust the arc to compensate for that. Okay. So what you just saw is that a saddle that is made to fit evenly unladen bridges. So what you have to do is give it more rock so that when the rider goes into it, you now have an even shape. So once you have that, you can then use the computer system to verify that that's true. Now you can adjust the formula for a rainer versus dressage because the computer then says, well, okay, yes, that's true. The weight of the rider is affected by this, but this particular discipline needs this much more. And then we can get into all sorts of different subtle things. All done with mathematics. What about the freedom of movement in the shoulder? What we developed is an orthotic just like what happens in shoes. <clears throat> and what we can do is we can actually take this thermoplastic and mold it so that the shoulder is free. So would you like to get your horse? I would I'll love it, yeah. We'll sort of get it in the general shape of the horse's back. And what's <clears throat> interesting is, is that while the body of a horse's back is round, where the saddle contacts the horse is actually flat. And that's what allows this gadget to actually work. We can look at what's happened. And what you see is this is what we saw on the computer. 
You see, you saw that the pressures were a little higher mm -hmm. up in the front. You see how it is here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're having contact oh, yes. in the back. Right. So you see that the compute, the gauge <coughs> does exactly what the computer does, mm -hmm. but it gives us the three dimension. Can you explain this? Yes. Well, what this is, is a way for us to relate the measurements we just took to an orthotic. But the whole important thing with measurements is that it gives us a way to control the process. That we're not guessing, we're not taking any wild, you know, estimates as to what is going on. Mm -hmm. Because what we want to do is we've basically created a mechanical instrument that replicates the horse's back. Okay. So now what we can see is, is that we've got the scapula covered, and then you can look at the same on the other side. You can see the fleece that's going against the horse, and then it's able to have the flares buried, buried in there. Full contact, we don't have a problem, but we do have a serious problem on the far side there. So we can go in there and mold this away. But what's noticed here at first level is we don't have a serious bridge. We've got basically blue all the way through. And what we can do is we'll just go in and since I know where the problem is, I'll just move it away. Can you see that? Can you see it? So what you can see is that by using the computer and having this plastic so that it's able to be molded, uh -huh. that we can keep going through this over and over, and you can get any fit you want. Hey, Look check it that. out. <laughs> it happens, perfect. Joe. Thank you so much. You're it welcome. Happens. You're welcome. <laughs> Hoorah. Teacha. I'm sick and tired of this saddle business, but you have made it pleasant for me today and well, I just want to thank you because now I know that there is a solution to my dilemma.